Locked on Mishes, baby. Craig Mish in the house. So much to get into. So much has been going on. We're going to cover absolutely everything on today's Locked on Marlins. You are Locked on Marlins, your daily podcast on the Miami Marlins. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Greetings from England and welcome to Locked On Marlins. This, of course, is your daily Marlins podcast and I am your host, Peter Pratt. Hit me up on Twitter at Miami Marlins underscore UK. If you are listening to the pod, subscribe. It's available free and everywhere. And yes, it is even November and there are still five episodes a week. Yes, sir. (laughs) If you are also listening and think, I would love to see what Pete's living room looks like. No problem. Head, Head over to YouTube. It's also available there. There's a channel. Hit subscribe there too. If you are watching on YouTube, you will see Already teased it out. Craig Mish is joining me. Background is looking sensational. No jacket, by the way, but Craig, how are we doing? Doing well, Pete. It is great to be with you. Uh, your podcast outlasted mine. And congratulations <laughs> on that. Uh, but very okay. happy to, to be with you here. I know that you and I, when we do these, tends to things get a little stirred up. And I would mm. expect nothing less than to do that once again today. So thanks again for having me as always. No doubt. There's plenty cooking in the kitchen, too, I would say. There is a lot that's been brewing. It's no doubt. I mean, it's early November. The Marlins haven't been playing baseball for some time, but there has been a lot of news. A lot has been happening. And I think there's going to be a lot to go uh, to get into in the next couple of months. So let's just dive into it because there is so much. Let's start with, I think the the starting point really is the fact that they went out, priority one, let's get a new manager in. And uh, you were on the pulse with that one reporting uh, away You did speak to me in advance of that starting to say you felt it would be a first-time manager. Was your gut feel? Uh, Actually, it probably wasn't a gut feel, but nevertheless, uh, it it ended (laughs) up being a first (laughs) that you had some insight perhaps on that. But it was, in the end, a first-time manager. Skip Schumacher, uh, the hire. You've had some time to get to know Skip as well. Just overall, how would you assess how the Marlins approached it firstly? And then also your view on Skip actually being named as the manager. Yeah, there was once upon a time, uh, Pete, hopefully you get down here for spring training one of these years. I keep telling you that this is the place to be. Now, once upon a time in Jupiter, before things changed quite a bit, and I'm not really sure why they did it. I think Homeland Security issues or something like that. I'm not really sure. Long story short, there used to be a time where you could walk out of the Marlins clubhouse in Jupiter, Pete, Mm. and hang a right. I know you can't really envision this, I know, but you would hang a right, you'd walk about 20 steps, you'd hang another right, and you were about 50 yards away from the Cardinals clubhouse. This, this, you could do this. This, this was a go. time where you could cover both teams at once. It was fantastic. So for when I was working at Sirius XM on the Fantasy Channel and doing a lot of interviews back and forth, I used to spend a lot of time at the Cardinals too, a lot. Because I would just go over there and, you know, ask questions and they would be playing, you know, a team they'd be leaving or they'd be playing the Marlins that day. And Mm -hmm. it was so easily accessible. I understand why they changed it. You now have to get, you know, credentialed for one team, credentialed for the other, but a more lax time, I guess. It worked in my benefit. So why am I telling you all this? Hey, I used to cover Skip Schumacher. Skip Schumacher was a good dude. He was on the side of the Cardinals. Uh, (laughs) And it was really easy. And and I, I mean, to say that we had this, like, uh, really strong relationship at that time would be false, but mm. I interviewed him definitely many times, talked about the Cardinals, talked about fantasy sports and all that. Uh, so it, it was really cool to see him mm. being in the mix for this thing. And then as time sort of went on, I uh, did have a chance to you know text him back and forth, spoke to him once on the phone, sort of to get his thought. Didn't really, at the time, didn't want to really talk about the interview process, just you know, certainly acknowledged that he was part of it. But beyond that, there was no conversations. I respected that about him at the time. I think that's kind of who he is, just really, you yeah. know, cut and dry, you know, black and white kind of guy here with that. And and then as time went on, Pete, it, it sort of got to me that there was a real good chance that this guy had a chance to be the Barlins manager. So in the end, I, I felt like it came down to him and Matt Quartaro, who ended up taking the job with Kansas City, although Luis Rojas, I had heard, like sort of jumped in there at the end and really 
left them with a great impression. Maybe mm-hmm. some name to consider for the future, too, I would say, in some role. They really liked the way that he interviewed, too. But Skip really wowed them, wowed Kim. It was Kim's choice, really, above all. Uh, you know, I, I feel like unanimously they decided that he was the manager, but she was really the one that was spearheading this. So he becomes the manager now. We you know, had that press conference last week. I thought he came across fantastic, as he's mentioned. He's gone to lunch or dinner with several players, so he's gotten mm-hmm. to know them and been speaking to them. And now he's got to carve out this this coaching staff, which, to be honest, Pete, I mean, here we are. It's November 9th. There hasn't been any reporting on that. I mean, we're, we're sort of getting to the point where this yeah. has got to start happening, I would think, soon. It's time, right? Because we're starting to see uh, some of the ex-Marlins guys uh, yeah. join another clubs. I mean, the Angels, they must have liked what they've seen from the Marlins offense last year. They've they've taken yeah, a ton of it. Try to hit it, <laughs> I guess. Maybe I don't know, but I mean, let's let's kind of circle into that then, because yeah, clearly, um, you know, getting the manager in in was kind of P one, P two. Some may think this was actually priority one was extending Mel Stoudemire Jr. and uh, sure. they've also managed to to reach an agreement there, which I think is uh, outstanding for mm-hmm. for everyone involved. Yep, um, multi year deal, I believe, as well for Mel. Does it align to uh, Skip's term as well? Two plus one, that like kind of a three year length. You know, I, I think, um, okay, I think, I'm just getting text sorry during the show. It always happens like this. <laughs> yeah. I, I think, boy, how, how far can I go with this, Pete? I, I think he may have a longer deal than Skip. I'm, I'm mm-hmm. not sure about that. I, I don't okay. I don't want to speak out because I'm not 100% on this. And it, it may be two with an option. Maybe that's possible as well. Or he may, ha- I'll tell you what, at the very least, Pete, I will say this, he has at least what Skip has. He may okay. even have longer. I'm not. I'm not a hundred percent positive on that. Yeah, it's fantastic news for the Marlins. Can't go too anyway. far on that one. I'm not a hundred percent. I think he may have three. He may have three. But I know at the very least he has two with an option. Okay. Okay. Awesome. So we know Mel's here for multiple further years. Where are they going to go with the with the staff though? Because there's pretty much you know they're keeping Mel plus one other guy, they're the bullpen coach, and effectively right. everyone else um, is gone. So a lot of roles to fill. And yes. yeah, like you said, time's ticking. So are there any kind of key names you're hearing or or candidates that really emerge at this point? It's it's a very interesting dynamic of what's going on. I think I think uh some I've heard some names. I there are some names that that have some familiarity for everyone. Mm-hmm. And there are some that have been sort of out there that I'm now sort of having to investigate and see if this is real, if this is not. But uh, I'm not at liberty yet to report because I've I've asked, can I? And I've been told sort of it's not like yet official. And so I can't really do that with the names here. But I would say the other interesting dynamic is that the, the teams that they are, are trying to get some of the coaches from some of the some of the coaches are already on staff with other teams. And mm-hmm. either they have been denied the opportunity to, to access them or those those people have ended up staying where they are so that's that's you know that's kind of what's been going on here it hasn't been i mean to say it hasn't been smooth i don't think that would be fair but there have been a little uh, some obstacles as i would guess that happens with every coaching staff it's like you hand pick someone that you want and then you're told Mm -hmm. no you're not going to be able to have that person for one reason or another so it's not like i would say like there are five secondary choices for skip at this point that would not be accurate but there have just been things that have been happening. And I look, I, I think you saw, I think it's public now. Uh, you saw Matt Holiday. He mm-hmm. took the job with the St. Louis Cardinals. And and, and I think Matt, I, I know Matt, I, I talked to him. I, I think that he was seriously considering joining Skip. He loves Skip. He's, he's yeah. you know, one of his really good friends. But, you know, when Cardinals' job came up, Cardinals are like, wait a second here. Are we going <laughs> to let Matt Holiday go to the Marlins when we can have him as our bench coach? I think that they made the right move. And, and I think Skip gave holiday advice in, in, in terms of what to do there too but given the proximity of where matt lives in oklahoma to where st louis is i'm a huge matt holiday fan mm. uh yeah i mean pete let, let's let's just think of this 360 view he's got two kids that are going to be the number one pick potentially in the major league <laughs> baseball draft would i want to have that guy on my staff as a coach that answer is yes development day, seems yeah. good <laughs> right like how would you not want to have that yeah. Uh, and, and he was a great hitter, st- a student of the game too. But I digress. He's not coming to Miami. He's going to stay in St. Louis. Either way, what I would expect this time next week, today's the ninth by the 16th, I would guess we're, we know who the coaches are on the Marlins. Yeah. 
Yeah, okay. It's going to be a lot of activity. And actually, there's been a lot of activity going on the last couple of days because the roster's had to con, you know, constri uh, constrict from 48. Uh, yeah. I mean, a couple of guys are on, on the 60-day overseas, but 48 down to 40. A lot of names uh, disappearing from the organization. Uh, and the one, the final one actually to go, uh, if you take it sequentially, was was Cole Salsa as well, which ah, for some, I mean, me included, I did a whole show on this and didn't even mention Cole Salsa as a, a potential that, that went. So a lot of activity here. But before we kind of maybe get into that specifically, just more big picture here, Craig. Where are the Marlins going this offseason? I know you got a chance to kind of speak to Bruce, to Kim, obviously hearing from Skip to, you know, right. where where are their heads at here? You know, and are there any rumors? Is there any truth, sorry, to the rumors that, that Carlos Correa could perhaps, um, you know, be, uh, be a Marlin? Your That's your rumor. <laughs> You're the ace reporter as far as I'm, I want to get into that in a minute, folks. I know there's a lot of people waiting for me to talk about that. I'm going to talk about that in a second. <laughs> Stay tuned. Stay tuned on all this shenanigans that are going on. I'm all about shenanigans, so I'm going to be back for a second. No, there's no truth to Carlos Correa. Come on. So, look, they're they're going to do it on a budget. I I think as I've talked about on some other at some other places, maybe it was with you. I think uh, attacking players in in their final year of their contract via trade, players with something mm -hmm. to prove, players that want to play hard, 162, like their manager. I think that is sort of along the lines of where they're headed here. Are they? Do they feel a little bit snake bitten by going out and getting Garcia and Soler, and then sort of getting virtually nothing in return? I think that's fair to say. I think mm -hmm. that is fair to say to recommit another fifty or another forty to two more players after that happened. I know that's sort of the nature of baseball. It's like, well, if you fail, you try again, and maybe in New York or Boston or Chicago, that's what you do. Mm -hmm. But I don't know that you do that here. And and honestly. I can't indict them for not doing that again based on what happened last offseason. But there are other ways to get things done. I think they'll do it via trade, Pete. I think that mm -hmm. stays along those lines. Uh, I, 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 I do think that they will have a – I mean, I said this last year and I was wrong, so I'm, should I try again? I think they'll have a starting center fielder that is not on the team right now in center field. Okay. Right? Let me take my big L, L on that <laughs> one from last year. I think they're going to try that again. And and now with Solaire being back on the team for sure, he moves to designated hitter. They have to have a left fielder next year, unless mm -hmm. Garcia moves to left, and they have to have a right fielder next year. And I, and I think that they're probably going to give De La Cruz somewhat of an opportunity. And I, okay, fine if you want to do that again, but they have to have some like legitimate major league options in that outfield. And 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 look, the the whole infield is sort of in flux too. They they need <laughs> a lot, Pete. I mean, we they could do. we could do hours on every position. Literally, like I, I don't even know, you know, uh, if, if there are 15 guys that I can name for sure that are going to be on the team this year. Maybe they will. I, I don't know. Listen, here's one. Here's, here's one I know for certain. Jazz, let's lock him in. Sandy, yes. let's lock him in. Yes. And then after that, I mean, yeah. the rest is honestly could be fluxed. I don't, really could. I don't know. <laughs> it's wild, isn't it? And yeah, to your I think point, De La Cruz will be on the team. Yeah, me too. Me, I think he, I think he deserves another shot at it particularly a obviously chance. how he came back he does they he, have he, a backup plan they have a backup plan yeah. this is what you spoke about last time right when we when we last got back together you said the problem we faced was they just didn't have a backup plan no if backup things went plan. sideways <laughs> they, need, <laughs> they need a backup plan <laughs> i'm with you but listen the the center field situation um we obviously talked about brian reynolds a lot last off season yeah. rightly so uh do the marlins make another run at reynolds do you think this uh this off season price may be lower Maybe, maybe, but what what I have what I have heard, and I have you know sort of seen is is I is is like along the lines of Marsh. I don't want to throw too many other players out there, but mm -hmm. along the lines of Marsh, will they pursue a center fielder from another team that isn't necessarily a buy low candidate? I don't want to use that term but potentially maybe someone that hasn't reached full potential that they like maybe more than another team. Could that be a possibility? Does that player fit the profile? So let's maybe look for something like that, either in center field or left field, just based on some of the things I know that they were trying to do. Uh, because again, of players that they like within their own organization. So may maybe that is the key. Will they try for Reynolds again? Sure. I'm convinced that if Reynolds is traded, that he is traded to Miami. If he is traded, I'm still not convinced that they're going to trade him because there never has been a we'll do this for this with Reynolds that does not exist if that did exist I think Miami would end up getting him 
but it was just like con- you know con- you know conceptually speaking what if we did this and the pirates were just you know not interested at all no so Fair may- maybe maybe still a possibility maybe what about just speaking about marsh clearly he was traded and uh, clearly the marlins got to a yeah. point where they had a deal on the table that they were happy to yeah. go with and yeah. the angels backed off uh, the angels then end up trading marsh and they did. and actually uh, the Phillies have done a nice job of getting that bat going a little bit in the obviously they made a, a, the World Series um, you know run. So it was interesting that maybe they didn't go back in. Maybe it was the fact the timing. I don't know. Maybe they felt out of it. Maybe a deal didn't come. But do you think the Marlins were back in on Marsh at all at that point in in at the deadline? I, I don't know. I didn't. I didn't hear. No, I don't no. think so. I didn't hear that. And it still remains to be seen what kind of player Marsh is. I don't think it's yeah. fair to look at Meyer or Marsh to really know what you're getting from either player Meyer, we're not going to see for another year at least. Yeah. And, 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 and Marsh was batting at the bottom of the order. I, I think that against good pitching, he was super exposed. He struck out a lot. So that looks still to be determined. It, I don't know really that the player too well that the Phillies gave up in that deal. I believe it was a catcher of some kind Yeah. that the angels coveted, but we'll, we'll see. I, I, I still think though, again, I mean, we went through this last year a little bit with, <laughs> with the center field position and Sanchez couldn't play. I, I don't think he could play fair. I mean, was was he played? Did he play fair defense even in center? I don't think that that's fair to say. And and we know about Jesus Sanchez. No matter what what happens in the future, aside from all the other stuff, he's never going to be going to play against left handed pitching. Like this is just like you have the data. Like it is it is all there for you. At the very least, he's going to have to platoon, mm-hmm. and he's not a center fielder either. So I don't know where he fits into the plans as well. Well, they burn the option too as well with Jesus, so that that really kind of constricts what they can do, I guess, going into into this season. They just got, yeah, I guess so. What about? I mean, the, like you mentioned, bloody first, um, the infield is <laughs> is in flux. Fair to say, what are they going to be doing at first base? Because they obviously gave Lewin a chance, and really, you know, if we have to look at the numbers and think, can you realistically go in with Lewin? You can't, yeah. can you? They're going to have to address first base, I think, because, you know, you need way. a backup plan to Coop. To your point about backup plans, like, yeah. you're going to need one with Coop. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm not really sure what happens with Cooper. I'm not positive on this mm-hmm. one. I, I could see a number of different scenarios playing out. Scenario one, he comes back, plays first base virtually every day. Mm-hmm. But again, I, I could see another scenario where they trade him and then they sign a free agent first baseman. I just don't think that whole one day Aguilar, one thing Cooper DH slash first base. That's, I don't think that's going to be anymore. I think Soler is going to be the primary DH and that is it. I don't think he can hold up be playing in the outfield anymore. His back. No, I mean, I, I think it on that turf. I just think that's it. Like I think he's got to be DH. I don't think he can play the field here. No. It stinks, but I think it's true. Somebody else told me that as well. So I, I think there's a chance Cooper could just, you know, simply be put back in that role. He came on again at the end of last year. We obviously had a monster slump. For yeah. boy, July, August, it felt like forever on that one where he just couldn't hit anything. Uh, but again, you know, he did make the all star team and his advanced metrics uh, in terms of hitting, barrel rate, hard hit. I mean, they're above everybody else on the Marlins. So uh, if the Marlins don't want him, I think any other team would be willing to take that chance on him too. So that's the dynamic that they have to figure out. And also, he'll be a free agent at the end of the season. So I think that's a flexible thing where he mm-hmm. could be back and play first base or. Maybe they could choose to go in another direction. I'm just not sure. Speaking of other directions and decisions they need to make, I think one that's been on the horizon for some time is Brian Anderson at third base. And yeah. final year of arbitration, six yeah. million, let's say. It's a big number, I guess, for BA. A lot of injury mm-hmm. history now. Um, what do you see them doing at third base here in this in, in this soft season? Yeah, I, I don't I don't see him being back. I don't know how that's gonna play itself out, mm-hmm. but uh, whether it's a trade, I mean, non-tender seems a little strong, but is that a yeah. possibility? I guess that exists. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I think that it. I think personally for him and for the Marlins, it would be best for them to find another spot for him to sort of start over a little bit, mm-hmm. see if he can be healthy in another location, uh, another place to hit. I know it's crazy, kind of where we came from a few years ago, thinking maybe that he would get a contract extension, but clearly he has been unable to stay healthy. And and honestly, when he was healthy healthy this season, he just didn't look like the same guy. I so no. whether it's a a trade or a non tender, personally for me, and I think probably best for him. I think I, I don't know how he feels about it. I haven't talked to him, but I I don't think he'll be back on the team. And this is no indictment on him. I think he could still have a very successful career. I've talked to other people in other organizations that would love to get their hands on him, mm. but yet 
with the salary that he's going to make this season, you're taking on a little bit of risk because of the injuries too. So if they can find some creative way to give him a new start, I think that would probably be the best route. So I don't see him uh, opening day on the team, but maybe I'll be wrong. We'll see. Let's talk about the bullpen. I think it's. Uh, I was talking about all the 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 wave of uh, waivers <laughs> that were that were made in the last couple of days, oh, rightly so. Yeah. A lot a lot of guys going. Um, like I said, Cole Salsa caught me slightly off guard. Me um, too. But yeah, yeah, I think that was a bit of a surprise, considering who remained on the forty man as well. I think there was maybe a few other obvious candidates, and the fact that sure. they'd obviously traded for Salsa and he had a, a great I year know. in twenty one. So felt interesting. We're back around. We've talked about center field. We talked about that last off season. Still have the same need. We still have a need in the bullpen. We still need to sort out this closer spot. What are the Marlins going to going to do to change it up in this bullpen? Because what what was tried last year was unsccessful. Something needs to change here. What approach do you think they take here? Yeah, I, I think. I'm turn my air on here. I, I think they they they, they sort of feel, in my opinion they sort of felt based on my opinion that Floro being hurt at the beginning of the season was a mm -hmm. major uh, uncalculated uh, issue that happened going into the season. They did not expect him to not be even at a hundred percent going into spring training. I don't know if this was his off season or whatever happened, but that was either a miscalculation or mm -hmm. just something stunning that happened where he just showed up and was not, Dylan Floro and couldn't pitch, didn't pitch at all in spring training. So they felt like that was a major loss yeah. that they were not accounted for. Now for me, I don't know, like counting on that guy to throw 80 games and save 30. I, I mean, I don't think that that was part of my calculation at all anyway. Oh, and so then Anthony Bender was, was, you know, forced into different situations maybe. And we all saw Bender pitch last year. We thought maybe he's a, a budding closer. That did not turn out to be the case. Now he's going to miss a year anyway. Mm -hmm. So my, my thought is, is that this bullpen is going to be completely revamped, which is not unusual for major league baseball teams to do. I don't know what Floro's future is with the Marlins either, by the way, mm -hmm. I have no idea what their plans yeah. are for him. I could see him being moved too. And as you just saw, the two guys that they acquired, acquired in that deal with the Orioles, one was, was Sulcer, who did have some closing experience, didn't have a successful season last year, and he just got punted, basically, which is, you know, that's a little stunning for me. Yeah. And then Tanner Scott, who I, I think can develop and become, a, a, a you know, somebody to get some late inning outs, but not in the ninth inning, please. No, no. Yeah, we've seen that play itself out, and I don't think anybody wants to see that again. And seventh, eighth inning, maybe, maybe so. But I think Peter, whether it is a guy, you know, no one like a, like a non-sexy name is, is Ian Kennedy sexy? Well, we know he had closing experience. He just got cut by the Diamondbacks. A mm -hmm. Chapman just got let go by the Yankees. Who can you get on a one year Sergio Romo, Brandon Kinsler, Brad Ziegler type deal? Yeah. I think that's where we're headed. With the it fits the MO, doesn't it? <laughs> But, but but and again, is it the worst thing in the world to have maybe somebody that can succeed, and then you look at it in July, and this guy's pitching lights out, and you can move him and get something back in return if they're not in it? I don't mind that at all. I think that could be the way to go. Mm -hmm. I, I am not a big proponent on spending big on the bullpen, but I am mm -hmm. big on having somebody that can get the job done. They just didn't have anybody going into last year at all. Yeah, like I mean, to that point, Bender was thrust into the the role, and you know. Clearly wasn't the right role for him, and they'd already tried Bass and decided to to keep him in his role that, that he kind year. of found, which worked. Really so yeah. I'm with you on that. I'm interested to see what they do with this pen. I'm interested to see in general. There's a lot of like there's so many different directions the Marlins can go. Um, it, it it's clearly not going to be a a heavy spending period, like you said. Snake bitten, I think, is probably a, a good description of that. Um, but, yeah, I, and, and by the way, the the one thing that that I came away there's a couple things that I want to end here on. the the one The one thing that I found pretty interesting about the media day that we had last mm. week with with skip and company was actually i don't i mean this sort of slid under the radar i think a little bit because normally when comments are made by by kim they sort of float to the top of social media we yeah. usually notice this we talk about it but it was it was sort of interesting for me to see kim make the statement that she was aware that she had been receiving some pushback on saying that the team's record was yeah. not indicative <laughs> the fact that she said that Told, told me, hey, she's paying attention. You know, she's she's watching mm -hmm. Peter Pratt. You know, she's she's watching like some of the things that that are saying and doubled down on it. By the way, too, 
saying that she really feels that way. Mm -hmm. And respectfully to Kim, I don't agree with that. I think that yeah, this is baseball, and and absolutely next year something unpredictable, Pete, is going to happen, yeah. and 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 the Marlins are going to lose someone again, and you were going to and what, what are you going to do at that point? Oh, injuries again, injuries every year. Like, yeah. that, come, come on, it's baseball. Guys get hurt. Like, I mean, Fernando Tatis Jr. popped for PEDs. Was that in the expectation for the Padres at the end of the season? Look, this guy's suspended a year. You cannot yeah. predict this stuff. Yeah. And so, yes, they had a lot of injuries, but. It is not an excuse for that. And by the way, if it is, and you give the Marlins one, two, three, six, I don't know, 10 more wins, where are they? Nowhere, right? <laughs> exactly. They're still not where they want to be. So I'll, I'll give them 10 more wins for those injuries next year. Still a 79 win team. Yeah. So in the end, that was one of my one of my big takeaways. And uh, one other takeaway that I do want to mention here from this is that I've been seeing a lot of stuff here lately. Pete, about, uh, you know, you and, and who you are as a reporter or as a host. And, you know, somebody made, you know, a comment to you or whatever. I, mean, I know that you had to, you know, we love drama here, so we'll save it for the end. But you, we you had to sort of defend yourself saying, I'm a fan and I'm a podcast. And, you know, maybe people don't like some of the things that you say or your comments or whatever. And it looks, and I, I'm in the same boat as you. And so, uh, you know, may, maybe in a little bit of a different way because I'm around the team sometimes. And, and, and so I'm going to take a lot of criticism naturally too. And that's, that's just, you know, kind of being part of the game. But I, I would also like to say here in the end is that there probably is not a more important piece to the Marlins uh, puzzle, social media wise, media wise, whatever than Peter Pratt. There really is not. And I want to tell you that I not only support everything that you do, but you are by far, by far, by far, the most entertaining part of what we have as a Marlins community here. And if people don't understand that and they don't respect that, whether or not you're being serious or whether or not some of your stuff is parody and they can't read between the lines are that who are you to tell Peter how they should be? I mean, there isn't a person in the Marlins universe right now, whether it is a fan, whether it is someone in the organization, whether it is someone in the media, whether it is a player I don't care who it is. No one should be telling you, Peter, how to operate your daily business when it comes to Locked On Marlins or becoming the fan or media member, or whoever you are in our universe. Because without you, I mean, you make this a lot more fun than it than it really could ever be. Without you, I don't know what I would do every day. I, I wake up sometimes in the morning and, of course, natural to go on Twitter to see the cr kind of crazy stuff that you're going to say which half the time, I don't know if you're telling the truth or you're not, or you're being uh, you know, satire or you're being legitimate. And that's what makes you fun, man. And shame on anyone who takes issue with anything that you have to say. I, I think you do a fantastic job. Do not change who you are for one second based upon what anybody has to say to you, my friend. You do exactly what you've been doing. I fully support you. And uh, again, shame on anyone to tell Peter how they think uh, should should be, because you need to take a much deeper look at yourself, how you act and how you represent yourself. If that's what you are concerned with, with how Peter does his uh, everyday business, please. Craig, I absolutely love you. Love you so much. What a segment. What a way to finish. There's no other way to finish. I really appreciate the, the comments and. Of course, your, your support. Of course, man. Are you are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? When Peter says, "I have a feeling this guy's going to hit a home run," I have a feeling this guy. I'm like Peter's like oh for one million this season. <laughs> Who's counting? And the one time he's going to hit, Peter, Peter, uh, people are going to go on to it. Oh my gosh, Peter knew. I get the biggest kick out of that because once out of every like 50 games, Peter gets it right that something's going to happen. This but no insane. one ever talks about the 50 that he got wrong. But the one he gets right, it's like Peter is he's a sage. This guy's and it and it, it, it I love it. <laughs> and, and Hayes, my son, we are always laughing, funny. You know, I'm pulling your clips. And if I, I mean, I, I, I got to tell you, to see that there, that there is anybody that would either challenge what you have to say or challenge how you operate on a daily basis does not get the gig. You got to get the gig. We're all having fun here. We're all going through a miserable five years. <laughs> I mean, you are a light at the end of the tunnel for us, my friend. So please, please do what you do. Don't stop. 
I'll keep on rolling, no doubt. No doubt. We're out of time. Thank Craig Mish for joining the show. It's long overdue. And uh, thanks for the kind words as well, Craig. And hope everyone's enjoyed the show, today's show. Here's the good news, guys. We're back tomorrow. <laughs> so we'll be Not back me. tomorrow. Not Craig. No, 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 no. I'll be back tomorrow. So uh, that's us. Wednesday episode, Locked on Marlins. Craig Mish, Peter Pratt, signing out. Hope you've enjoyed it. Be back tomorrow, guys.